Hello, and welcome to part one of an overview looking at what's new in Data Protection Advisor version 6.2. In this part, we shall look at the administrative login, licensing, the unified dashboard, and a very new and useful facility, the object search. Look out for part two, in which we shall deal with smart groups, user properties, and data domain analysis. In just the few minutes available, we can only touch upon some of the exciting new features of DPA version 6.2, so please refer to the associated release notes available on the support zone. Please take just a moment to pause and view the headlines of this latest release. So let's take a look at the changes between DPA 6.1 and the newly introduced DPA 6.2. First of all, the administrative user now has a forced password reset upon installation, and default users have forced password resets through the setup guide. Moving to licensing, a 60-day evaluation license is now inbuilt into a new installation, thereby eliminating the need to apply for an evaluation license. Furthermore, electronic licensing is introduced replacing the previous .wls licenses with .lic licenses. Whilst the two licenses can co-reside, it is strongly recommended that existing .wls licenses are replaced by the new licenses at the earliest opportunity. A separate video will be made available to cover the change in licensing. Changes to the dashboards and dashboard creation and management is one of the most welcome changes within DPA 6.2. The previously limited 11 viewlets have now been replaced by the facility to add any control panel to the dashboard. These control panels are now known as dashboard templates. New actions have been introduced through the dashboard actions, enabling the saving, emailing or publishing via SharePoint of a dashboard. Dashboards may be edited through the Edit Dashboard option by simply completing the Report Wizard Properties panel for each dashboard template. Notice the Schedule option, indicating the point in time when the dashboard template content will be updated. The layout of the dashboard may be modified in the Properties panel or by using cursor control to move or resize each template. Changes made to dashboards in this way affect the content and appearance at a user level only. To make global changes, a copy of the dashboard may be created through the Dashboard Templates tab under Reports, making the new dashboard available to other users. A new dashboard may be easily created by clicking on the Plus tab, which will open a simple wizard giving the new dashboard a name. Here we'll add the Backup Job Summary. Selecting a system dashboard template or custom template if available from a modified copy of the system template. A scope. A time period. And finally a schedule defining the point in time the dashboard is to be updated. And our new dashboard will appear as a new tab. Data is currently unpopulated due to the imposed schedule. The refresh button will not update the displayed information, so we'll edit the properties of the schedule to run very soon. Once run, we can again use the Edit Dashboard or Dashboard Format to move and resize as appropriate. Note that currently any reformatting will be reflected at the resolution of the current monitor, and if viewed from a different monitor, it may look completely different. A future version of DPA may allow a percentage of the screen to be used to cater for different resolutions. Ordering of the tabbed dashboards is now retained, and will be presented in this order each time you log in, until the order is changed. A wholly new feature in DPA 6.2 is the Object Search, which may be accessed through the Inventory tab. This feature will allow you to search, display and administer your inventory in some completely new ways, and has been driven in large part in response to user requests. So let's take a very brief look at only a few of the aspects which may benefit the user. 
Previously, it has been difficult to search for specific types of object. But with this new feature, if, for example, you wish to display all of your data domains, you may click on the Types drop-down and, selecting Protection Storage Data Domain and clicking on Search, you can quickly see all of the data domains being monitored by DPA. Let's extend this a little further and clear the search. It has been difficult previously to determine which objects a particular agent has been monitoring. Clicking in the Agents box will open a list from which you may select any agent, and on doing so, the display will show all of the objects which are being monitored by this agent. Here we see that the selected agent is monitoring Avamar, VMware, Oracle, and Networker objects. Object Search now facilitates administration of previously onerous and time-consuming tasks. For example, the editing of data collection properties for multiple objects. So again, let's look this time through the Requests box at our data domain objects, revealing a list of four objects. Using the familiar control or shift click operations, we can select multiple or all objects and clicking on data collection reveals all of the requests associated with these. Here we see that while SNMP requests are consistent in their credential definitions, the SSH requests have different values. Selecting a request and clicking on edit will open a dialog allowing the user to modify the attribute and apply this to all of the selected objects. This would be particularly useful in this example if you wish to standardize the user access or credentials across all objects. While we are in object search, although this may be performed through the object library, let's take a look at a major improvement to historical data collection. Previously performed by sometimes tortuous and lengthy command line activity by the mod test command, this has now been brought wholly into the DPA UI, introducing an easy and intuitive method of historical data collection. Let's quickly perform an object search and, from types, backup application, we'll select a networker object. Under data collection and selecting networker job monitor, right clicking the run button will reveal a gather historical data option which will then display a convenient ui panel removing the complexity and human error prone aspects of the command line operation thank you for watching